Greetings, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Here I am in front of uh, London's most iconic shop. This is Harrods. So um, Harrods was named after a Mr. Um, Charles Henry Harrod, who founded a, a small shop in Southwark in uh, 1824. Southwark is um, an area of London which is nothing like as chichi as this one. It is uh, south of the River Thames, but he obviously prospered in his trade and opened this shop here on this site. Um, ooh, I've got it right in 1879, but the current building dates from 1904. And so it's the largest department store in Europe and is one of the largest in the world. We've got an absolutely huge floor area. So um, for some people, Harrods is London. And so the Harrods family hasn't owned it uh, for um, almost a century, but it still retained the name. They even had the Herodian School for their staff, which still exists. Although um, the, the children, their staff are not the only people who go there. In fact, very few of the pupils there are the parents of Harrods employees. So giving you some idea of the sheer size of Harrods. So it was famously bought by um, Muhammad Al-Fayed sorry, Mohammed Fayed and his brother in 1985. He's not Al Fayed. He um, falsely put the Al bit on to suggest uh, grandeur. Um, all right, so the, that Egyptian chap who's lived for years and years who's always refused British citizenship because um, he was judged to be not of good character, having ordered a break into his business rival's deposit box, a deposit box, that's Tiny Roland. Tiny Roland was actually very tall, so his um, his Subra K was always uh, ironic. He's this Tiny Roland was this um, business tycoon born in India to German and Dutch parents, been interned there during the First World War. He was in Germany, then here in the UK, but uh, when there's a lot of anti-German prejudice in the 30s, and stayed here after the war and became a multi-millionaire. But he was a he was a deadly rival of of Muhammad Al Fayed. Though they did kiss and make up right at the end of Tiny Roland's life, he died in 1998. So um, it's known for the, the green livery of its staff, Harrods, and um, having a horse-drawn carriage uh, made out in Harrods colours. And indeed, that went round to Tiny Ronan's house to deliver presents one Christmas as part of the sort of peace offering between the two. Um, so Harrods is an absolutely legendary shop, and uh, its motto is um, uh, everything for everyone, everywhere. Well, it's in Latin. But uh, so um, they don't st stock everything, but there's loads. There's food and there's clothes. They do retail in that and shoes and furniture, white goods, um, software, high tech. They don't sell cars, um, they, but they sell just about everything else. And they have staff who can speak lots and lots of languages. So they've had a dress code for 30 years. Um, so you can't wear anything which is um, too uh, indecorous like spaghetti string tops or cut off shorts or ripped jeans, things like that, distressed jeans, or indeed um, sports gear. So this uh, Russian football team, um, Shakhtar Donetsk, came here several years ago. They're all in their tracksuits and they were turned away. So there, there are um, security guards on the door. And uh, the staff, they make a percentage. Everything they sell, they get one or two percent of everything they put through the till, a little incentive for them. But really, it's got about 330 shops inside, selling all sorts of brands like Agent Provocateur, Louis Vuitton, um, Christian Dior, um, Diane von Furstenberg, and um, more names than I can possibly recall. So you're getting a flavor of it by looking in that window over there. So I'm giving you some idea of the sheer scale of the place. Uh, and as you can see, it's got six floors, or is it even seven, actually, if you include the basement. So it's obviously got a few, a few lifts. That's an elevator for you if you're American, and a few staircases. Even going to answer a call of nature is a bit of an experience in there, um, because there's someone there to hand you a, a towel to wipe your hands and things like that, okay. an attendant, and the whole place is fragrant and spotless. Oh, I'll show you a chap in, in, in Harrods livery wearing this green uniform here. You can see big Harrods teddy bears. They've only ever had one Harrods shop outside of the UK, and that was in Argentina about the time of the First World War started, when um, Argentina was kind of very pro-British, and there was um, a significant British community there who were um, quite well regarded. Obviously, in 1982, it went a bit differently. So you've got an idea how big it is. Christmas hampers they're selling, a hamper being like a wicker basket full of a selection of foods, the kind of thing you'd want at a Christmas time. You take a hamper as well um, with you if you're going for a picnic. So if I go back, perhaps I'll, I'll, it'll emphasise just how big it is. There's a huge long taxi rank if you want to jump into a taxi here. So some very wealthy um, foreigners who are resident in London, they often choose to reside with a walking distance of Harrods. For them, this is their corner shop. Um, like um, uh, notoriously, the, the, the Azerbaijani's banker's wife 
lived not a stone's throw from Harrods, so she could pop in to spend uh, several thousand pounds a day. And um, her husband is cooling his heels in a uh, Azerbaijan penitentiary there for having relieved uh, the um, treasury of um, tens of millions of dollars. And his um, good wife may well be joining him. Isn't that sweet? And you can see up high in the window, it's probably a bit difficult to make out, these sort of winged lions, that, that motif. And look at that, the sort of the false columns. So it was a little bit neoclassical. And inside they had an Egyptian room that had a memorial entitled Innocent Victims that was dedicated to Dodi Fayed, the son of Muhammad Al-Fayed, and indeed um, Princess Diana. When she died, she'd been stripped of the title Her Royal Highness because um, Muhammad Fayed's um, son, Dodi, he was once married, he had no children. He was a bit of a playboy. He'd been to, I think, uh, Institut Le Rosé, the most expensive school in the world in Switzerland. He had been to Sandhurst, that's the Royal Military Academy here in the United Kingdom, as in to pass out as, a, as an army officer, but he dropped out. He'd been some sort of um, attaché at the Emirati Embassy. They spent some time in the UAE, even though it's not Emirati, but spoke Arabic and English. And um, he'd been, was it, second assistant director on Chariots of Fire, that 1981 film about the 1924 Olympics with Eric Liddell, the Scottish Christian fundamentalist, and a few others, and Harold Abrahams, a um, uh, Jewish athlete who had to overcome anti-Semitism and so on. He, so he had a bit part in that film, but really he'd done almost zilch with his life. And then he was, uh, he was engaged to, I think it was a, an American model in 1997, when he suddenly met Princess Diana and supposedly had a romance with her, but that may be much exaggerated. See a little um, outside cafe there, La Durée at Harrods. Now look at this, there's a rear door. Isn't that very pretty, but rather overlooked, okay? Someone's rear is often the most attractive side. Uh, so that's it, it's in this um, um, area, which is um, Knightsbridge, Knightsbridge tube station is very close by. But we're also near Sloan Street. This, this shop, it's got its own postcode. In the United States, you call it a postcode, you call it a, um, a zip code. Okay, because it's got such a huge acreage. So uh, it sells all sorts. I mean, it doesn't come cheap as you can imagine because to afford this kind of, um, this kind of space at downtown London is obviously going to cost a pretty penny. And somewhere else they've got a depository for all the um, things. They just don't have time to, to don't have space to keep here. They bring in obviously goods to replace things when they're out of stock for what, whichever item it is. So then there are, other, there are other businesses which are paying for floor space here. So um, several years ago, it was bought by the Qatar Investment Authority. That's the sovereign wealth fund of the, of the state of Qatar. This um, bogus news item went out saying that because of the row between Al Qatariya and Saudi Arabia, that Saudi Arabians have been banned from the shop, but that's obviously bull. How would you tell? They do not inspect passports as you're trying to come in here. Um, so Mohammed Fayed hasn't owned it for quite a long time. That innocent victim's uh, memorial's gone down a long time ago. And there was a sort of book of condolences to Princess Diana. And I signed it a couple of years ago. I signed it, I did it, signed Prince Philip. That was a gag, I did actually write that. Um, okay, so Hans Mansion's a block of flats, which is surrounded by, as in Sir Hans um, Sloan, that famous um, 17th century um, Irish doctor who, um, Gave his name to much of London, like Sloan Square. So Harrods, they don't have the possessive apostrophe. Isn't that terrible, teaching children to get it wrong? Um, <clears throat> so uh, what else can I say? Yeah, there's, there's a dining room in there, and they've got children's clothes, men's clothes, women's clothes. Um, so informal clothes, beach wear, suits. They've got a bridal department. There's really just anything about anything you'd mention. Famously, in 1969, they sold a lion, a live one, named Christian. Um, was that featured in Born Free? You wouldn't be allowed to because of animal welfare re restrictions these days. Just sell a live beast. But there were very few rules about those things back then. They sell all sorts of cosmetics, skins, skin creams, um, you know, toiletries, uh, and whatever else, kitchenware, furniture. Um, okay, so you know, they do not sell living beasts anymore. Uh, but anyway, they're already getting ready, ready for Christmas. You see all the, um, the, the fake uh, holly up and pine needles. Bit of a Christmas tree up there. I think it's a bit early mid-November myself, but you know, business business imperatives are what they are. So that drives people to get these things ready. Uh, anything else I should, you should know about Harrods? Yeah, so over 330 little shops in there, about 12,000 employees. The last year of which full accounts are available, they made a profit of 233 million pounds. Um, so 
worth investing in, I would say. And for some people, it's an essential to have a trip to Harrods. A, a Russian friend of mine, she insisted that I buy her a Harrods phone cover for her mobile phone, so I did. But then I have seen little Harrods shops in, in, in Heathrow. I don't think there's Harrods outside the United Kingdom, but that's it. So even if you're not gonna buy anything, go in. I'm someone who actually loathes shopping, and I go in for the experience as well, okay? Because uh, you can just feast your eyes on these things. It's really um, aesthetically delightful to see everything they, ha everything they have to offer. The kind of thing I could never afford or I wouldn't, wouldn't bother to, even if I could, because come on. This is just, this is just excessive. This is ostentatious capitalism is worst. Conspicuous consumption and all that. So obviously there'll be a bit of a fight to get in here. The January sales. The January sales actually commence on Boxing Day. That's the 26th of December. So we're coming up to Black Friday. So, you know, if you want to buy things now before they get Christmas stock in and uh, prices jump. But the January sale, though it starts in December, does go on well into January, depending on how well they've done at flogging other items. You can have a personal shopper here. You can have people who speak various languages here to assist you in purchasing whatever it is that you might need. Um, but then there are loads of other shops around here like Topshop and Zara. Uh, okay, so we're very close to, to Hyde Park, just over that way. So Knightsbridge is known for its, its wealthy Arab community. The Ishmaelite brethren who choose to reside around here are tend to be from, from some of the um, uh, oil-rich states, such as Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, and so on. All right, so that's a complete circuit of Harrods, giving a little bit of idea about um, what the most famous shop in London is about. So I shall switch it off now, so please, Donate to me to keep this channel going. I need those donations to sustain the channel on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com or indeed on Patreon. Um, let me see, watch me on uh, you know Twitter, YouTube. Oh, well, I'm on YouTube right now. Um, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, book online lessons with me in any humanities subjects for GCSE, A-level, Common Entrance, International Baccalaureate. I edit documents, I translate documents from French, Spanish, Italian, German, Romanian, and Russian and I'll be your tour guide in London, so direct message me. Goodbye.